who is Santa Claus? And how did we end up celebrating a holiday whose mascot is a jolly old man in a red coat? Well, the answer may not be as magical as you may wish to believe, but it remains an interesting combination of stories and beliefs nonetheless. Now where exactly should we begin? Well, let's start off with the most common connection between Santa Claus and other figures, that being the one and only Saint Nicholas. Saint Nicholas is said to have given away all of his wealth in order to travel the land and assist the poor and the sick. But Saint Nicholas was just an average man, albeit an extremely generous and caring one, but rather normal nonetheless. So how do we end up with a man who houses hundreds of elves that are capable of building toys for every single child across the world? Well, strangely enough, we end up straying away from the European origins and finding ourselves in the heart of the Big Apple itself. Two native New Yorkan men whose work in their respective fields would help to shape how we see the image of Kris Kringle today. First, in 1822, we have Clement Clerk Moore, an Episcopal minister who wrote a long Christmas poem for his three daughters. Moore's poem, which he was initially hesitant to publish due to the nature of the subject, is very largely responsible for the modern image of Santa Claus, giving characteristics of the more rounded figure and the supernatural ability to ascend up and down chimneys with a mere thought. Although some of Moore's imagery was inspired from other sources, mainly previous beliefs, especially some of the European origins such as Saint Nicholas and a version based upon the Nordic god Odin. Moore's poem helped popularize the now similar image of Santa Claus that flies from house to house on Christmas Eve on a sled led by eight flying reindeer, all with separate names, with the intent of leaving presents for children who have been good during the year. However, this continues into 1881 when political cartoonist Thomas Nest drew upon Moore's poem in order to create the first likeliness that matches our modern imagery of Santa Claus. His cartoon would appear in Harper Weekly and would depict Santa as a rounded, cheerful man with a full white beard, holding a sack filled with toys for lucky children. It was Nest who gave Santa his bright red suit trimmed with white fur. He even gave Santa his famous workshop located at the North Pole, along with all of his elves, his reindeers, and his wife, Mrs. Claus. Now there are several other aspects that blend together to get these moments in history. In order to get the eventual creation of the Jolly Man himself that we are familiar with nowadays, multiple altercations and changes have been added or mixed together between different beliefs in order to match the present century match the customs of the everyday people who would ultimately be celebrating this time of the year in such a way. Who knows, perhaps things will change once again at some point in our own lifetime. It would actually be a little bit fun to look back upon it in future holidays, but for now I want to wish everyone a happy new years. Regardless of what you celebrate or believe in, I hope your winter season is nothing less than relaxing to help recline before the new year. Until then, once again, have an amazing winter season and stay spooky guys.